Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. A friend of mine recently stopped by with this gearbox and I think what the deal is is he has a newer tractor and he has an older mower deck that was missing a gearbox. So he managed to find this gearbox, had a drive shaft made for him that went from the tractor to the gearbox, fired it up and the blades were spinning backwards. So he brought it to me seeing if I could reverse this for him. His initial thought was, if we simply put this gear over on the other side of this thing, then it would spin backwards. And he's certainly not wrong, but it's a little more complicated than that. The thing is, this end plate here uh, is, has a raised spigot on it that uh, pushes on the outer race of this bearing. And so it's the ball bearing itself that takes the axial load of this, which is a little weird, but who am I to say? So what I am going to do is, it needs a new shaft. This one is shot. I'm going to make a new shaft, but I'm going to configure it differently so that instead of sticking out this side, it sticks out this side. And I have an uh, oil seal I picked up. I'm going to uh, bore out this end cap so I can press that in there. And that will give him the desired effect. The input will be going in the same direction it is now, but the output will be coming out in the opposite direction. I hope that makes sense. So before I take this thing apart, I'm going to map out all the features on this shaft, keeping in mind that it's going to stick out this side, no longer sticking out this side. I have some keyways, uh, snap ring grooves, and holes that all have to be in the proper position. So I'm going to draw myself a little sketch here of how I want this thing to end up and then we can take it apart and start working on the new shaft. And this is all going to be super boring so I'm going to do that off camera and come back when I've got it all figured out and we'll get back into the exciting things like dialing. Okay, I've got this gearbox apart, shaft is out, gear is out. I have my little drawing here of the part I need to make. I'll be honest, it kind of messed with my brain a little bit because this is how it currently kind of lives inside the gearbox and I'm making one that'll do this and the gears on the opposite. Uh, anyways, I think I got it figured out. I think we're good to go. Going to start working on this shaft. So I'm going to be making this new shaft out of this uh, lovely piece of 4140 material I have. It's, uh, I, in my humble opinion, it's by far the, the best material for this job. Over at the lathe now, I'm going to face and center drill both ends, and I think I'm going to do all my turning here between centers today. So I've got my piece of shaft uh, center drilled, faced off. It's up here between centers in the lathe, and I have my drive dog driving it. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to see what I'm getting for taper. I'm going to see what sort of tolerance I feel I can, I can hold in the lathe. And if it's given me any grief at all, because these are bearing fits on here, they have to be pretty mint. So if this gives me too much grief, I'm going to do this work, uh, the finishing at least, over in the tool and cutter grinder where I'm really spoiled to have that. I mean, you can come creeping up to a final size quarter thou at a time and it's just uh, practically effortless. So we'll see how this goes, then we'll make a decision and we'll carry on from there. Not the best chips I've ever made. Nice finish. Let's see how she turns out for parallel and everything else. Where is it? It's over here. So I'm just putting the finishing touches on uh, finishing this diameter up. I had about a thou of taper, was best I could do on the lathe, but uh, I left a little bit for emery and I'm getting super close now, just testing my fit. Might need to go back for a little bit of a dusting, but generally speaking, I think it's coming along well. And let's see where we're at now. I would like this to be a fairly light, tapping fit. Yeah, a little bit. I really don't want to have to fight it, so I'm going to take just a little more off. 
Just gonna cut this off to length now. The reason I left it extra long and, and cutting it to length now is because one of the quirky things about the Smithy is because it's also a milling machine, the cross slides really wide. So it's incredibly tough um, with the width of that cross slide to get your tool all the way back to your tailstock and then all the way up to the chuck. And with the chuck, it sticks out a lot, so there's extra room and you can quite often do it. But when I'm using the faceplate and a dead center, uh, there's just no way to do it. So I actually needed all this extra just to be able to hold on to this thing. The reason I turned down more than I actually needed was um, I was concerned that I might not be able to get this done in the lathe and that I might have to finish it off in the tool and cutter grinder. So I was leaving a little extra material on there for my wheel to travel into because wheels don't do really well coming straight up to a square edge. I'm just going to face this off to length and uh, put a little chamfer on there. I'm going to put this little chamfer on my file and I did want to explain one thing. I don't ever hold my file like this even though that might seem natural or comfortable. Problem is if one of these chucks comes around and clips it, I mean that's really going to drive that into your hand. So I always hold it like this so even if something goes wrong it's free to launch and I'm not going to get hurt. Next thing I want to do is put these uh, retaining ring grooves in the new shaft. And if you caught our last video, you may recall we made this grooving tool. I didn't have a tool that was small enough to do the job and uh, now I do. So let's see how she works. I'm just going to touch off, I'm going to set my zero and then I'll get some oil on there. Pretty delicate little tool I have here, so I want to go easy on her. And keep it nice and wet. Here's where we're at so far. The shaft diameter is done. It turned out really well. It was an awful lot of messing around. Uh, took quite a while, but I, I'm real happy with it. Uh, we've got a good press fit into our bearings there. Got our snap ring grooves in, and all that's basically left to do is to put this hole in and these two keyways. Now, this hole is timed to this keyway, so to do this work, I'm gonna set up my rotary table in the mill and so we can get that exactly 90 degrees between those two features. So this is going to take just a mountain of dialing here. I've got to get this piece, the shaft, running true in the four jaw chuck. So I'll dial that in. And then I need this piece running true uh, to the ways of the lathe so that my keyways are nice and straight. So I'm going to get some dialing done and I'll bring you guys back in once I'm more set up than I am now. I'm all dialed in every which way now and I've got my edge finder in and I'm going to find out where this edge is and then get to the center of where I'm going to drill that hole. Now that I'm sure I'm exactly where I want to be, I'm centered on the shaft this way and I'm the proper distance in from the end. So I'm just going to touch this with this little center drill, make a little mark there that my drill bit can follow so that my hole goes exactly where I want it to go. Now that I have my center hole there, I know my drill is going to go straight. So first I'm going to go through it with this 1 8 drill bit and then I'll switch collets and go through with the final size which is one quarter inch. This is my final size, quarter inch diameter.
I mentioned earlier that these, this hole is timed to the keyways 90 degrees. So I was super careful before I started. I got my rotary table bang on zero as best I could. So now it's a simple matter that now that that hole's done, it's a simple matter of turning this 90 degrees and I'm ready to start cutting my keyways. Okay, enough with the kit and back to work. But she's so soft. <laughs> Ain't you, Mal? Aren't you just the softest little kitten? I'm just down feeding here until I get a flat, the same basic width as the cutter. And then I'll do my depth calculations from there. I'm going to bring this to depth in several passes. Don't want to push my luck here. I'm on my last keyway here. This happens to be the last feature on this shaft. And then I can start working on uh, modifying uh, one end cap to get an oil seal put in there. There's our finished shaft out of the machine, all deburred, all cleaned up, pretty much ready to go. Got my keyways my retaining ring grooves, and this hole. I've got this machine switched back over into lathe mode now. I'm going to center drill this uh, thrust cap here, and I'm gonna bore it out to fit this uh, 20 millimeter oil seal that I have. I'm going really easy with this drilling and so on because you can see I'm not holding this by very much at all and this is just aluminum and I don't want to throw this thing out of here so I'm just going to go easy. I've got this end cap all bored out. I've got my seal kind of just sitting in there and I'm going to tap it in nice and flat now with this uh, aluminum block. There we are. Okay, now I'm going to put this thing back together. I took this gear out just to clean in behind it. There was some, some guck in there. And what I'm seeing, if you pay attention to this keyway here, the key that's in there, let's see if I can demonstrate this. Oh yeah. It's really bagged out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a brand new key in there. Let's take this key out and have a look at it. If you look really closely here, you can, you can really see how there's like a step worn in this thing. And uh, it rocking back and forth like that is not at all ideal. That's just going to lead to uh, premature failure. So I do have some new key stock. I'm going to make up all new keys for this thing. Okay, I've got all my little keys made up now. And uh, you can see 
nice fresh keys and nice fresh keyways. All that worked well. Uh, so now I'm just going to start putting this guy back together. Retaining clips on there. There's that key in place. Line it up with the keyway. And I think I can send this first snap ring home now. See how that goes. Happy, happy. Okay, that looks good. I got this snap ring to do. There's that guy. These are the shims that put the axial preload on these mating gears so that as this sort of raised boss here pushes on the outer race of the bearing uh, and these shims restrict its travel and they actually set the backlash in the gears. Well, there we are all back together. The shaft used to stick out this side and his lawnmower was running backwards. So with this new shaft, it's sticking out the opposite side. Now his lawnmower blades will turn the proper way. Just need to make a gasket for this, which he's going to do, and then he'll fill it with oil. Uh, my work here is done. Well, that's gonna do it for this <laughs> video, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.